Shalom, and welcome back to the Code Searcher. I am Jonathan. Folks, there's no way I can bring you the critical information unless I back it up and explain the fundamentals of why the Bible codes are a practical application to reconciling the Bible and current events. And so what I want to do is talk to you today about the ephod. Um, again, there's no way that you can understand the practical application unless you understand the point and the purpose of the ephod. Now, what we're talking about is the breastplate, breastplate of the high priest. Um, and how many of you know <laughs> that the Father is a peculiar Elohim and revealed himself in peculiar ways? He did mighty things in the sight of the people. Um, just amazing things. In the sight of Moses, he spoke to Moses in, in the form of a burning bush. So he chose a bush to consume it in fire, but not burn it up, and speak through the fire to communicate. So, so understanding that the Father is the same yesterday, today, and forever, it is reasonable to understand and believe that he can communicate with us in any way he chooses. That includes burning bushes or the ephod. Now, what is the ephod? The ephod was a priestly garment. It had on it uh, the stones, uh, all the precious stones that had identified the different tribes. Uh, maybe this one's best to go to. Maybe that one. Hang with me, folks. All these precious stones, and then you had the Urim and Thurim on the shoulders. And the priest, high priest would go into the Holy of Holies. And you can find this in, in the Scriptures, folks. I'm not making this up. The high priest would go into the Holy of Holies once a year, and he would communicate with the Most High through the holy fire and through uh, the letters that were on the stones. And, and the holy fire from the altar reflected off, and this is, I'm, I'm trying to put it in, into perspective for you, reflected off the letters and onto the wall and um, therefore communicating with the high priest. And, and a said number of questions were asked to the Father. But the point being, the Father chose this way to communicate with the people. Why? Because He is a mighty Elohim. And if you recall back at Sinai, when the people heard Him, they feared for them, their life. In other words, you just cannot speak plainly. He is so great and so mighty. Mountains would melt if He spoke plainly to you. So He chooses His own methods, His own manners. He may even speak to you in the in the form of a jackass which you know has happened in the scriptures he spoke to the prophet Balaam through a jackass the reason I'm telling you this folks is there there is a niche of Christians out there that will trash the Bible codes and any notion of it as being legitimate putting you in a box and saying it's not possible for him I'm about to blow your mind. Let me just take you to what we do know. In the codes, and this is from the rabbis, guys. This is not something I found. This is respectable code researchers in the world. And I reworked this table. Many of you saw this several years ago when we revealed that encoded in the scriptures is the Bible he encoded and more. Not only the Bible, I believe there's other books encoded. The book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, the book of Jubilees, all those books that are still in the <laughs> Ethiopic Codex, I believe are encoded. So we see in this table that right off from the beginning of this research, there was a connection to the ephod. You can see there ephod in the plain text. Um, you who speaks in the plain text, ephod running across there 
Uh, and this is my favorite here, right in the plain text. Uh, he reads the characters or letters, and right under that is the word of Yahuwah, Debar Yahuwah. That is the word of Yahuwah. Um, parables in here, computer, uh, the mystery, searching the hidden cylinder, dozens and dozens of terms, folks, that are overwhelmingly confirm that Yahuwah has anointed this for the end times. Now, let me take you over um, to an actual... Well, well, where the actual table I'm going to show you came from. I've, I've reworked it. I've decided to use it as a teaching tool to teach you the practical application because there's no way for you to receive the critical information uh, that I have about current events unless you understand the practical application. And that is the connection to the breastplate. Uh, you can see here, Glazerson's found Zophan HaTanach, which is the hidden Bible codes, the hidden codes. And clearly, you can see where he is showing you the connection to the ephod. The year 1976, which is 5736, is the year that the anomaly was discovered in the computer form. Now, it was suspected for over a thousand years. Even Isaac Newton suspected that there was a code in the Hebrew Scriptures. And we know this from the Cambridge papers that were found that in his private time, 75% 70 of the time of the research in Isaac Newton did was searching the codes by hand. So as a researcher today with a computer, you have a, a severe edge over the most brilliant mind in history in searching codes. Um, all the names that are relevant were here. Doran, Whitsum, Rips are here. And as you can see, there's a void down at the bottom of this table. Now, folks, I'm going to take you over to that table right now and show you what's in that va that that void down there. This is the same exact access term. It's just turned different. Uh, if I could use this uh, function here, you can see you can turn the or switch the the canter of the spiral, which will put the letters exactly like Glazerson's. You see it's back this way. Mind you, rips, just put it in perspective. Ephod, breastplate, rips is here. So we're seeing the same table. Ephod, and you can see rips down at the bottom. Not only that, we have um, Dorum in the blue right here, Dorum. Whitsum, which is... Um, one of the major mathematicians that, that had a lot to do with, with Bible codes. But this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to use his example and what came of it to show you the connection um, to the end time remnant and why it's, uh, why it's important to consider. The practical application. So here it is. Let me just straighten it up a little bit. This is the same exact access term, Bible codes. And you can see the mention of the ephod in the center there, uh, with the verse that runs through there. Uh, we have an anomaly here, that, which is bara kodim, which is he created the codes. I kid you not. Uh, right at the very top is from Genesis, when who was creating uh, everything. And you can see it caps it off. It says, Yahuwah saw that it was good. So we're talking about the Bible codes. We got the word computer in the green. Codes in the, in the plain text right there. Um, Eliyahu Rips, the, the, the mathematician and scientist in Jerusalem that wrote the program. You can see his name, Eliyahu Rips. And again, Doram Whitsum to, uh, the most um, respected researchers in this field. Now, what occurred to me in seeing this table was, um, you know, there's not a lot of researchers worldwide. You could probably count on two hands, two, or well, you know, four hands, 20, 
all together in the world, Bible code researchers, serious Bible code researchers. And if you could find Durham Whips, uh, Durham Whitsum and Eliyahu Rips, then it seems to reason you can find other Bible code researchers, right? Indeed you can. I found several serious code searchers. And let me show you first. Um, my friend Chris Ray from Bible Code Research Theory. His name is up here at the top. You can see Chris. And just those two letters. If you can find the first name and the last name in close proximity, you have a code. And, and indeed we do. Chris Ray, the two letters. In very close proximity to computer, uh, he created the codes and all of that. Running through the resh in his name is, is the letters that literally, when you permutate these letters, they say he was selected for this. He was selected out of the tribe of, or out of the children of Israel. So Chris Ray is there. But not only that, I was curious to see if my own name was there. So let me just show you this. Now, uh, my channel is currently number one on YouTube in on, on Bible Code Research, far above anyone else, even Rabbi Glazerson. So, you you Google Bible Code, you'll find me somewhere in there. So, is reason to believe? And again, this is going to the practical application. We're not looking for for a, a future event, folks. There's different ways you can look at codes. You can look at things that have happened, things that are are you know possibility, and things to come. So. This is a, happens to be a fact, historical fact, right? So my name should be there, and it is. As you can see, it's right there in the center. And it's Jonathan. And not only is, you know, like the other researchers, other names, first, middle, and last, all in one place. The two groups of letters in yellow, you see top and bottom here. That's the first, that's the middle name and the last name. That's Matthew right there. And then the last name on top of that. And they happen to be the same exact skip, which is 1981, significant year of my life. Um, so Jonathan, Matthew Wright, Shilchim, which is emissary, and Iya, which is he is suited is suited for him. What is suited? Well, the, you know, you see the letters there in black. It's the same letters here, which is ephod. Ephod. Now, that might not strike you as, as significant at all until you read the actual verse that runs right above it. And this will, you know, settle it for you as far as the accuracy of codes and what they mean. Before we get into that, because this, this, this table from Gladerson had a lot to tell, a lot that he didn't show you in his in his actual video. So I want to break it down for you, play by play. This very first is um, where it's very clear what this is. We're talking about the ephod, and they shall bind the breastplate by the rings thereof, and the rings of the ephod with lace of blue. And it may be above the cur curious girdle of the ephod, and that the breastplate not loosed from the ephod. And, in, and Aaron shall be bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplates. Remember when I said about the names are on each one of these stones? The breastplate is called the breastplate of judgment. And this covers his heart. And when he goeth into the holy place for a memorial before you, who are continually, and thou shalt put on the breastplate of judgment, the Urim and the Thurim, which goes upon um, the shoulders, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart. And when he goeth before Yahuwah, and Yahuwah shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart, and before the Yahuwah continually. And thou shalt make the robe of the ephod of all blue. This is the part of the priestly garment. So it's, you know, running right through there. And with Barah Kudim, uh, he created the codes. See the connection. It's absolutely there. 
Um, and then I had this highlighted here. Let me go back to what that. Oh, actually has something to do with the bench plate, uh, the bench mark in time, which is now. I will call. Uh, let's see. For Yahuwah, thy Elohim is a consuming fire, a jealous Elohim. And when thou shalt beget children and children's children, and ye shall remain long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make graven images, and likewise of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of Yahuwah and thy Elohim to provoke him to anger. And I will call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, and ye shall soon utterly perish off the land. Whereunto you go over the Jordan, and to possess it, and ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And you shall scatter you among the nations. This is the diaspora. And ye shall be left in few in number among the heathen, whither you shall lead you. And, ye, and there ye shall serve other gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, neither which see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell, which they are not alive. And there you shall serve gods, the work of men's hand. Uh, excuse me. But from hence thou shalt seek Yahuwah thy Elohim, and thou shalt not find him. If thou shalt seek them with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, even when thou art in tribulation, as now, and all these things that come upon thee, even in the latter days, if you turn from Yahuwah, uh, if you turn to Yahuwah thy Elohim, and shall be obedient to his voice, for Yahuwah. Thy Elohim is a merciful Elohim. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, neither forget the covenant that he made with your fathers. Uh, that's a promise to the remnant. And that's, for the most part, who this message is for. Many of you will not receive this because it's not for you. But if you're a part of the remnant, he is speaking to you in these codes, folks. It's mathematically and statistically impossible that the, these things happen. Now, in the conjunction where he has Jonathan and my first and last name, Ephod, uh, the emissary, here is what is written there from Samuel. Now, out of 30,000 different chapters and verses, this is what the Father chose to put in here. And the Spirit of Yehul will come mightily upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them. It shall be turned into another man. And let it be, when these signs come unto thee, that thou do as thy hand shall find, for Yahuwah is with thee. That's very powerful in my life, folks. That is how the Father confirms what he's already shown me before. Because in, in my very own table, and yes, I have looked myself up, that is not impossible to do. Everybody's in code in some way. But one thing that, that gave me the confidence to do what I do is what the Father revealed about me that He knew 3,500 years before I ever existed. The information He put here. Now I'm showing you just a snapshot. Just a portion because there's a lot of personal information that's encoded here. So I'm just going to show you, you will not find on my channel anywhere where I've ever showed any, any of you this ever. But I'm showing it to you today. Because I want you to see where from my confidence comes in what he has shown me in his word, in his book of remembrance, in his book of life about me. Uh, this is absolutely me. Uh, you can see a form of my name, Jonathan. Uh, in the center there, this is what I wanted you to see, the, the, the anomalies. Because uh, not only is Darla involved in, in the table he showed me about me, but also my former wife, which is if we had this extended down, which is encoded way out here. Very strange to me why that's so. But Darla being very close to me here. But not only that, if you see the anomaly with my name, you see Yod Vav Noon Tav, which is Noon Tav Noon, which is Jonathan, in one direction. And then the very same letters going back the other direction. Yod Vav Noon Tav Noon, the Tav being highlighted in red, the very center. That's an amazing anomaly, frontwards and backwards. But what runs through it, which is the Son of Light, or a Son of Light, and of the same, and then Shiluch. Also, you remember in the other table I just showed you, Shaluk, 
the emissary runs right through there. Darla, right here. The Hebrews or the Hebrews with Matthew connected to it. Matthew, my servant. Many things. My whole life is encoded in this spot here, folks. My children, uh, a lot of details. So there's no question that these Bible codes are legitimate because of what he's shown me. Now, here's the thing. Now, if you can, if you can use, and I tell this to my students, if you can use the subject matter of yourself, because no one knows you better than yourself than the Father. So it's you and the Father. What better way to hone your, your skills than searching what is known about you? Therefore, when you're searching other things, you're a little more accurate. You see, does, does that make any sense? Let me just take you to a code about Yeshua and show you and prove to you ultimately what I'm talking about. And so I'm going to, I'm going to search a code for you live right here, right now. And show to you that this sequence of letters, and it is a lot of letters, folks. It is a lot of letters. And the fact that these letters appear and where they appear, the, the, the statistical value of this and the, um, the probability of this happening is somewhere in the one in seven trillion that this is there. So these are the letters. Hmm. Just mis misspelled. It need to hit that. That is a lot of letters. Now think of this as a combination in a lock. And this is going to unlock a secret, and in this matrix of this secret is going to be a truth. Now what I just typed in is coming from above very quickly. My name is Yeshua. And this is what happens. Bear with me. The computer is running a program right now. And running the camera, so it's having a little issue. Coming quickly from above, Yeshua is my name. And that is amazing. Again, like one in seven trillion that this would ever happen by accident. There is no way that you can tell me you can find this encoded in Moby Dick or Gone with the Wind. No way. Now, how do we know this is accurate? Let's just test it out, folks. Where is it in the scriptures? This is Isaiah at a skip of 20. And this is what we, we come to. Literally, at the beginning of Isaiah 53. Let me just read this to you, folks. Are you sitting down? Who hath believed, I report, and to whom is the arm of Yahuwah revealed? For he shall grow up after him a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. And he hath no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And he is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hide, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of Yehoah and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. We are all, we are like stray gone, excuse me, we are like sheep gone astray and we have turned every one to his own way and Yehoah had laid on him 
the iniquity of us all. And he was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, and he brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep before the shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. And he was taken from prison, from judgment, and who shall declare this in his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was stricken. And he was made his, and he has made his grave with the wicked, and the rich in his death, because he has done no violence, neither is there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased you who are to bruise him, and he hath put him to grief, and thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. And he shall see a seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahuwah shall prosper in his hand. And he shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. And by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath. Listen to this. He hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many. And the intercessor for the transgressors. Can you see that? He said, quickly I come down. My name is Yeshua. Let's skip to 20. Encoded in Isaiah, and only that, folks. You know, I gave you the initial term. There are some 1,100 other terms that include in this table all the facts, all the details about this event. And if you haven't guessed it, folks, this was the crucifixion. This was the purpose of the Messiah to come as the sin offering. Can you see the practical application to using these to reconcile his scriptures. That's what I'm trying to get to you. There's no way you can understand the gravity and the critical ap the critical point we're at in history with what I have to bring for you unless you get this down. The only reason Mossad and the CIA and other groups like the National Security Agency have an interest in this is because of this, the truth in this. The fact that the ephod is a direct connection to the throne of the Father. There's no getting around that. You've seen the accuracy of this at, at this channel. And I say that with great deal of humility. What we are doing here, what we are embarking on in this next year, is unheard of. The potential information or the potential ramification of the information we have. And when I say we, I'm talking about myself in the school. Is going to shake things up. We need your help. You guys. Those of you that are in a remnant that are holding on for the coming of the Messiah. He has entrusted us with this technology, with this anomaly, the ephod, for a particular purpose. I can't do it by myself. It's not just about me, guys, or Chris Ray. There are other people involved. I can take you to the book of Daniel where it says Daniel seal up the book until the end of time. When knowledge is increased, man runs to and flow. And I can show you every student from my class, first and last name, there. Also connected to where it says, and there in the last days in the end times, there will be many who understand and instruct those. Or there will be those that are instru instruct many. And it's connected to the, to the codes. 
So my plea to you is there is information that is critical for you. And again, the scripture says, my people die for a lack of knowledge. Help us to reconcile this. We need your help. We're currently embarked in a new project. I'm going to call it Operation Codebreaker. Because we have reached the parameters that we can go in the current software that we have. There's a desperate need for new software. And so we are currently commissioning engineers to des custom design something for us. It can be done. 135 different books have been used in, in code research. We are looking for believers to partner with us. We're not talking about orthodox. This is the, the codes came down through the orthodox to us. We want something they haven't touched. We want something customized to believers because we believe there's other information there. That's all I'm going to say about it. That's all I can say about it. Now, if you would like to partner with us, you can do this in many ways. You can donate. You can support the school. You can take a Hebrew class. You can take a code class. There are many options. If you would like to, go to decodesearcher.com forward slash apply and apply for both Hebrew and the code course. And you can distinguish which one you would like to, to sign up for in your application and in your, in, your, um, in your process. The other way is you can go to the web page and just simply donate. That's how you can help. Folks, again, I cannot do it on my own. We are at a critical juncture in this kind of data where there's, there's entities actively seeking to wipe us out. We are already concerned about uh, the hackers and what they can do. The suppression on YouTube, the censoring, I can't exactly bring you all the data I need to because they'll shut it down. So we're re we are researching other ways. Patreon is one of those where you can get exclusive information without censorship. So please support that in the coming days. Um, one thing I do want to address because I showed you a table about me, I I'm sure I'm going to get a rash of emails, I always do, about looking individual persons up, which is not impossible to do. I can find any one of you in the codes, but so can you. I don't have the time, and this is why I turn you, you guys down, the thousands of you that have asked me, and if I was in this for money, I could charge a dollar for code searches about persons and be a millionaire, but that is not what this is about, and that's why I don't have time for that, but here's my deal to you. You take my course. You allow me to train you. Give you credible software. Credible resources. And you can look yourself up. Now I warn you, you may or may not like what you find. But I will train you to do so. Given that you, you do make it through the inter interview process. I, I just can't train anybody to do this. I do have to turn away a certain percentage away from this program for one reason or another. But that's my promise to you. If you take the course, I'll teach you how to find yourself. Not only that, your whole family. You can see your whole family there. Everything is encoded. There's nothing the Father has not for, forgotten. Every detail of your life, every detail of my life, He's got in His Word. That's why I believe it's the book of life. Folks, if you're interested, again, go to the web page. Give us, give us a shout. Um, subscribe. Share the video. Please get this information out there. Because in the next few weeks, we're working really hard to bring you some, some shocking stuff. We can't talk about it now. But we will bring it to you soon. And not, not just myself, other witnesses. I'm training these students to be another witness to you. Another watchman on the wall with an ephod and they can also confirm or deny whether these things be true are you with me 
I need your support, guys. Go to these, decodesearcher.com forward slash apply if you want to be a student. If not, go to the donate part and you can help us with your finances. We surely need it. This We do this full time. We train these students full time. And now we're engaging in a new program where we're teaching the basic uh, biblical Hebrew. The demand was there. Many of you, you messaged me asking if we would do this. And so here it is now. Here's your opportunity. If you would like to learn biblical Hebrew, be able to search your own scriptures in the original Hebrew, we're going to teach you how to do that. And, and it's very affordable. Um, all the proceeds go to you know, promote the school and goes back into the school to give you the different resources that we do. We are committed to excellence. We are committed to bring you the best Torah and Bible codes out there. And that is why we are number one anywhere on the, on, on the web. Shalom. We love you guys. Be blessed in Yeshua's name.